Hello everyone, my name is Ekpap. I also go by Pierce. Or wait, I said it wrong. My name is Pierce, but I also go by Ekpap on the internet. I'm an illustrator that likes to draw stuff, and I frequently make field notes videos as well alongside these videos. Today I'm gonna be painting a winter landscape on these canvas panels over there. Um, you'll see in the video. But I'm pretty excited. It's a Christmas present for my grandparents, so they're gonna get that. That's it. Let's, I don't really know what else to say, I'm gonna be very honest, it's just top right in. Peace! Alright, these are the panels, they're 6 by 6 inches, and they're not made for gouache, they're made for oils, and I have no idea how to paint with oils, and yeah, you'll see the problem that comes up later with using gouache on these. Also, I am so sorry my head is in the frame for this beginning shot. It gets better later, but this initial shot of sketching, I'm, I'm very much so zooming in, something you don't want to do. Also, I forgot to mention this in the introduction, but if you want to take out your sketchbook and paint or sketch along with me, I would love that. I find that I do that a lot too. I get my sketchbook out when I'm watching other YouTubers videos and find that I'm much more productive when I have like a podcast style video of someone painting in the background. So if you want to do that, feel free to grab your sketchbook, pause this video, grab your sketchbook, paint with me. This is the problem. Look at this. So as I paint, the water from the gouache pools on the canvas because the canvas is so rough and has like a certain finish. I try out my water soluble crayons and I kind of get a similar problem, but it's kind of fixed. I end up getting the idea to use sandpaper to make the canvas smoother and it ends up working fantastically, but it ends up smudging the pencil a little bit so I don't have as clear of a guide, but I feel like that's okay because I don't even really follow the guide. I end up doing something completely different actually from what you're seeing here. You probably saw it in the thumbnail and if you skip to the end of the video you'll obviously see the end product. But the snowy landscape I paint is quite different from the initial idea I had and I would argue that it's also compositionally better than my initial big mountain in the middle and little tiny mountains on the side. I make much more proportionally equal mountains in the end. I also really like this blue but I think I made it too saturated for the sky. I talk about that in the end when I'm critiquing my artwork. You'll see if you if you watch the whole video, which is nice. Sketch with me till the end, I dare you. Um, also if you have any comments on how I might improve either my process or my painting skills or my sketching skills or my perspective skills or anything for that matter, please comment. I say this again at the end as well. But I love both interacting with you guys and learning from you guys. So if you have any tips, let me know. Or have any other YouTubers who might have tips. I know some of you have commented tutorials I should watch, and that has been extremely helpful in me progressing as an artist. So if you have any of those videos, I would love to watch them. Also, just interacting with you guys is fun too. Responding to your comments, having conversations, it's kind of a vibe. I'm laying down the clouds here, which is funny because also in the end I don't really do any of these clouds. These are very similar clouds to my other landscape I have did, and I didn't really want to make it a similar looking landscape, so I ended up just scrapping them. I find it interesting though that I've already developed my own style of clouds that I unknowingly create in all my landscape paintings that I have done since that one landscape. Which is interesting as well because style is something I feel like you get when you practice a lot, but I haven't practiced clouds very much. But regardless of that, style, style is interesting. I feel like style is what determines what type of an artist you are. Like people can determine which artist is which by the style in which they paint their paintings. But the way one discovers their style is very interesting because I feel like there's no determined process to discovering your style. It kind of just happens. In a lot of ways, you create your own style as well, like it's not something you learn or something you do, it's kind of like a culmination of the different approaches to creating art put together into your style. There's a style that I really like, it's a clear line style, it's very common in like old comic books, especially like the French comic books like Jean Gerard Mobius and um, The Adventures of Tintin. 
that kind of like very clear, very thin line around all objects and then colors held within those like blocks. I see that a lot in digital art nowadays, but I would love to learn how to create that clean line art traditionally. Um, so far, I've not really found a lot of great tutorials. I've kind of fumbled, fumbled through it in Procreate on my iPad. Um, but if I can ever figure out how to do it with an actual pen and paint, that would be pretty awesome. I know there's one YouTuber that does a really good job with clean line art, kind of does a Studio Ghibli style. Jenny Xia, I think her name is. Um, she's a gouache artist and she's very good. Now you can begin to see my creation of these snowy mountains that look a lot better than my initial brown and blue mountains. These actually look snowy and you can see me making the mountains rise a lot higher than they initially did as well. I'm pretty proud of this because I feel like it illustrates my understanding of light a lot more than my previous paintings. I think it shows how much I have learned in the past quarter at school creating these like uneven um, landscapes that have these curving jagged edges that are shown by a contrast between dark and light colors. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It reminds me a lot of my childhood when I would go skiing with my grandparents. That's why I thought it was very appropriate to make this for them for Christmas because even though they're in their 80s, they still go skiing, which I think is amazing. Um, so painting a winter landscape, I think, emphasizes the memories I have with them of going to Stevens Pass in Washington and just skiing with them on like the hills and seeing the mountains. I'm going to talk about this at the end more, and I've already mentioned it once, but the sky is very saturated and I don't really like it, but I suppose that's okay. All right. Also, with the this white paint, you can't see it, but it is puddling in the same way that it did before so what i ended up doing was not even really painting the canvas at the bottom because it's already white and i just laid down this very very light blue to illustrate the shadows on the snow which i didn't expect to turn out as well as it did i used one of those wide brushes and just like went ham going back and forth and it looked really nice i feel like it made the perspective of the whole painting just come together while I was painting this, I was listening to the audiobook The Shape of Water. It's water, water, water. I don't know how to say it. But it's an audiobook about this like aqua dude being captured by the US government and then a woman who's not able to speak falling in love with him. It's a very interesting book. I've seen the movie a very long time ago, but reading it is also very interesting. If you have any book recommendations as well, let me know in the comments. And yeah. Also, wait, hold on. That picture right there that I showed previously, I'll put it up on the screen again. That's what I'm using kind of as a style reference. I'm kind of trying to copy the style of this painting. I think listening to things while you're painting is a very great way to both engage the logical part of your mind while you're expressing the creative part of your mind it also tends to keep me at least very focused on what i'm doing that's why i listen to audiobooks i know some of my friends and other artists as well listen to podcasts or music um i mean i i listened to music a while ago when i wasn't as much as an artist but i kind of got tired of music after a while like when you paint five hour long projects and just listen to like music non-stop especially lo-fi i feel like you kind of get um less into the music as you listen to it more and more which made me kind of sad because i'd put music on in my car when i'm driving and i'd be like this is not as good as i remember it which is why i started listening to audiobooks because it's a great way to read books and be like yeah i read books i because i personally am not a big book reader i don't read very much. I find it very hard to focus and sit down for a long period of time and just stare at words. I find that I drift in thought. So being able to do something with my hands while listening to the words of a book is a great way for me personally to finish a lot of different titles and different stories 
I've, I listened to The Way of Kings recently, which is a 50 hour audiobook, more than 1000 pages long in book form. I would have never been able to finish that if I was reading it, which I think is very cool that I can finish it by just listening. Something I wanted to talk about in this video, but I still haven't thought up a way of tying it into directly what I'm doing, was doubt in art, because I feel like I've been pretty doubtful of my skill lately, like questioning, like, why am I an artist? Why am I doing this stuff? And I just wanted to, like, share my thoughts with you, because talking with a few other my artist friends, it's definitely not uncommon to doubt ourselves as artists or doubt ourselves as, like, People who can succeed in the art field, I feel like especially like professionally, it can be very easy to doubt our skills. At least for me personally, I doubt my skills pretty often. Um, and I don't know, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Talk about why we doubt as well as how I personally overcome it. Like with this painting, I feel like at the very beginning when I had no initial concept, I... I there's always like this little doubt in my mind like is it actually gonna be good and especially as I'm going along like when I first made the brown and dark blue mountains in my head I was thinking this isn't good why am I even trying to do this um, and it wasn't until I pushed forward and started challenging myself to think of new ways to paint it that I was encouraged to continue because I could see what I could do but it was kind of in that pit of like oh I don't like this what am I supposed to do with this that I feel like I questioned a lot. And I feel like I'm, I'm in that position a lot recently, like questioning if I'm able to complete something and questioning if I'm good enough to complete something. Uh, I feel like that's been on my mind a lot. Um, especially like why art? Because a lot of times people say like art is worthless, art is meaningless. And I made an entire video about this like called the importance of art because I needed to remind myself like this is why art is important. But I feel like a lot of times today when there's so much emphasis on science and business and financial things and making money, art is often overlooked because it's more of a long-term investment into the future. I mean, you can just like look at Europe. Look at how much art is in Europe. The amount of money they get from tourism there for people just wanting to see the art is enormous. Like that's that's a huge portion of Europe's financial gains is the art they have. Um, but it took a while to get there. Like the cathedrals that are made in, in and around Europe took years to complete, like 300 years. Like that's insane to think about, like having the commitment to finish a piece of artwork that takes 300 years. That's multiple lifetimes. So I, I feel like doubt in art is normal, especially when you have long projects that you question yourself in. But pushing forward, I think, is important. Pushing forward through the doubt. And telling yourself like you can do it, even when you might question that you might not be able to. Maybe I'll make a video about this in the future. I feel like that would be a good video idea. Because I am finishing up here. This video is going to come to a close very soon. And yeah. Thank you for watching this. I'll end it with a little outro. You'll see some nice B-roll footage in a few seconds. And yeah, here's the finished product. Okay, so we are all done with our panels here. We got all three. We got the nice little tiny one with the little tiny house. If you can see that. We got middle one with just a mountain in the middle. And we got this one with a little fence going off in the distance to show some perspective. Overall, I'm very happy with these. I think my grandparents are gonna like them. I think, I hope, but 
there's a problem with them. The problem is, is they're very saturated. Um, they look very pretty, they look very picturesque, but the amount of saturation, especially in the sky and on the mountains a little bit, I feel like draws away from the overall pop of them. Um, I would have liked a more chromatic grayish sky to make the snow pop out a little bit more. But the thing with gouache is that it does fade over time if you have it in direct sunlight. So I think that problem might fix itself as time progresses as these panels are like hung on walls and stuff. So I might have unnecessarily prepared for the future in that matter. It is Windsor Newton paint though, so it might take a while because it is nice paint. Other than that though, I had fun with this. I It's been a while since I've done a landscape. Actually, has it? Yeah, it has. The last landscape was my landscape video that you can watch. One of these corners. It's pretty cool. Ta-da! Yeah, anyways, that's the end of the video. And if you see anything wrong that I did with these or have any tips on how I can be better at painting or perspective or composition, let me know in the comments. I am all for improving and learning, and if you guys have anything to comment about that, that'd be 10 out of 10. Anyways, peace. Hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching until the end. Peace out. Also, I mentioned this in my other video, but here is my website. I am open for commissions right now, and if you want one, feel free to contact me on there or just check out my artwork. Also, if you want to keep sketching, feel free to click on one of the videos here.